Owen Wilson and Selma Hayek star in Amazon Studios' mind-bending film Bliss as an unfulfilled man and mysterious woman who believe they are living in a simulated reality and must decide what's real and where they truly belong. This February, chase something real. Amazon Studios' Bliss now streaming on Prime Video. This episode of Star Talk is supported by Progressive Insurance, where customers can save an average of over $750 when they switch and save. Visit Progressive.com to get your car insurance quote. It only takes about seven minutes. National annual average auto insurance savings by new customers surveyed in 2019. Potential savings will vary. From the American Museum of Natural History in New York City and beaming out across all of space and time, this is Star Talk, where science and pop culture collide. Host Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, and I got with me Chuck Nice. Hey, Neil. Chuck, today it's Cosmic Queries. That's one of our favorite forms everybody of this loves show. It. Everybody, 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 everybody loves it. 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 And <laughs> <laughs> we are, in fact, educated people. <laughs> hey, I know. My mom is spinning in her grave right now. <laughs> so, uh, but this is a. Uh, a cosmic queries of a topic we've never solicited before. No, we have not. Yeah. What? Uh, and the, what's... the topic is the deep, deep space, deep thoughts, uh, deep the questions. Deep questions. Well, wait, Chuck, you got to give it in your deepest voice. Okay, here we go. And, and by the way, we did this once. Yes, we did. I, and I think I, I, I think I beat you by a half a tone or something. Yeah. Just barely. Let me hear it. Let no, me hear it. here we go. All right. Deep thoughts. Deep. Thoughts. Yeah, you got me already. Yeah. Deep. See, I got to drink scotch the night before. <laughs> and, and smoke a cigar. Yeah, I got to smoke a cigar the and smoke drink some and scotch. the alcohol right. just fix right. that right up. But then it becomes like a deep voice and like somewhat Harvey Firestein. Oh, oh, raspy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it becomes like raspy. Deep thoughts. Thoughts. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> if you put on the accent, it's a deep thought. Th- thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> The scotch doesn't give you the Harvey Firestein <laughs> accent. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool if it did. A couple so, scotches. Uh, <laughs> deep, deep. Can All right. someone call me an Uber? <laughs> I've had too much to drink. Deep. All right. All right, let's get deep. Let's get I like deep thoughts because usually there isn't a right answer, so you just get to sort of play with it and see where it takes you. Yeah, man. All right. So this is deep All questions right. only. All right, let's do it. So, uh, so listen it from our fan base. It's from our fan base, and as usual, we start with a Patreon patron because they're fans that pay us. <laughs> and nothing says fandom <laughs> like a check. <laughs> All right. <laughs> By the way, there are different thank- levels you can be a patron. Yes, uh, the way Patreon. What's, what's the lowest level? It's like- uh, five bucks a month. Actually, you can go down to two, two dollars a month. But we really want you to come in at five so that you can get the perks of getting our videos and right, being right, able okay. to get extra content and we'll we re- revamp that and recently. we read your I, I name. Re- I don't remember what's in the list. Oh, okay. One of them I think you you come on the show. Yes, that that's get, the that's you, the five. We put you on Star Talk. Yes, you come on the show and you are a guest on the show. Right. And you get to ask all the questions you want. That's cool, man. Uh-huh. I, you know what I would do no, we didn't say whether we'd actually air it. <laughs> oh that's so wrong. <laughs> no no we do of course. We do. By the way, wouldn't that be the ultimate like rip off. Yeah, the open. It's Psych. like, yeah. so when can I expect to see this? Oh, you can. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. All right, so let's go with our Patreon patron. And here's the question from Jonathan Wax. And Jonathan says or asks, what boggles your mind more than the thought of endless time or the thought of endless space? So it's impossible to truly contemplate endless time because you would spend the rest of your existence doing so. Well, here's two things boggle me. Okay. There's a beautiful frontier of research going on in the field of neuroscience. Oh, interesting. So I have two questions related to that that boggle my mind. Okay. I'm going to write these down. Can the human brain figure out the human mind 
It's a great if it is the human it. brain that actually creates the human mind. Creates the human mind. Mm. That's, a, that's a good question. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Or do you need something outside of that? Right. That is greater, smarter, different, so that it can come in and then understand that as its own test test kitchen. Wow. Now, so, Carl Sagan has famously said, "Go ahead." That humans are the universe's way to understand itself. The universe is understanding itself through human beings. Through humans, correct. Without so, humans, there'd be no thoughts, right, to, to do that. But however. That elevates us higher than I'm prepared to do so. Okay? You think so? Yeah. Because who says we are the measure of what is intelligent in this universe? Well, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. So that, so that statement, that Carl Sagan statement, is kind of like a cosmological Descartes. That's like the universe, the Descartes universe. Uh, oh, of I the, think before I am yes, kind of thing? Right. Okay. But it's like, we think, therefore you are. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, Chuck. Every once in a while, I'll do something. We think, therefore, you, you are. are. Right. Yeah. Rather than, I think, therefore, I am. Yeah. Oh, Chuck, that was beautiful. Oh, thanks. We man. should end the show right now. Because <laughs> we ain't surpassing that thought. <laughs> Thank you for watching yeah, Star Talk. Exactly. It's downhill from here. <laughs> Wait, so I wonder whether there is a level of intelligence out there where we are today what chimpanzees are to us. That's interesting. So, for wow. example... Oh, that's terrible. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I hope not. Well, you can go to a chimpanzee and say... Yeah. And say, uh, tomorrow morning at 8.30, let's go to Starbucks and have a cup of coffee. Nothing in that sentence makes any sense to a chimpanzee. Right. Or ever will. I'm pretty sure there's a, a chimp, chimp Starbucks. <laughs> I'm just pretty sure there is a chimp Starbucks somewhere. I'm just saying. You, you think Starbucks figured out how uh, to yeah, make a chimp Starbucks? Yeah, Starbucks has <laughs> got to be selling chimps coffee somehow, some way. Is that why they're yeah. so hyper at the zoo? Exactly. You know what I mean? You go to get your coffee and it's just like, Curious George? <laughs> Curious George? <laughs> Decaf latte for Curious George. <laughs> Okay, sorry. All right. But so, go ahead. Wait, wait. So, 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 is so, so wait, 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 wait. Here's why I say that. And I've go said ahead. this many times. I've written it. And I would tell you to your face now. All right, good. So there's about 1% difference in DNA between humans and chimps. Okay. All right. Yet we like to think of ourselves as highly superior. Highly superior intellectually to the chimp. Right. Maybe the difference in our brain power is as small as that 1% indicates. Ugh. So that... Uh, pulling termites out of a mound with a stick that was carefully chosen from a branch, right? Is from from a from a, a bush. Maybe that is not very far from space travel. The Hubble telescope, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no, wait. Think about it. No, no. I know this sounds crazy. Oh my God. No, no. Think about no, it. Maybe, maybe. Oh, look at those cute little humans in their telescopes. That's what I'm they're saying. Up there. <laughs> look at that. Is that a space shuttle that they just launched? Okay, so now watch. The smartest chimp yeah. that are studied in labs, right. that are brought in forward into chimp societies, right. right? You bring them forward, and what do they do? They'll stack boxes to reach a banana. Mm -hmm. They might put up an umbrella. They'll do some things, okay? Have rudimentary sign language. Our toddlers can do that. Right. But those are the smartest chimps. Oh, but they're right. But our toddlers do that. Same thing with dogs. Well, dogs, I, dogs have about. Like I know. I could. Two. I could do this example for dogs as well. But chimps is, is that, yeah, simpler because they're closer to they're us, clo even closer. So I watch. Got, got you. Got you. See what you're doing. You see where I'm going. I okay. So watch. Doing. If the smartest chimp equals our toddler, and there's only one percent difference in DNA between us, right? Let's go one percent beyond us. Ooh, that's scary. That's what I'm saying. If we go 1% beyond us in that same vector wow. of intelligence... Yeah, they're traveling at the speed of light. Then... They've, they've then, figured out light travel. Then the smartest human, they'll roll forward. They'll take, they'll take Stephen Hawking and they'll say, this human is slightly smarter than the rest because he can do astrophysics calculations in his head. Right. Like little Timmy over here who just came home from alien preschool. Right. The toddler. The toddler. Right. <clears throat> And uh, say, oh, you just composed a sonnet. Isn't that cute? Let's put it up on the refrigerator. Oh, you just derived the principles of calculus. Oh, oh isn't that, that cute? Oh, oh, that's funny. So if, <laughs> so if the smartest human does what their toddlers can do, right. their average people will have thoughts. They will have sentences that will rise 
above and beyond our most brilliant capacity to understand. And I stay awake at night wondering whether the universe has complexities in it that are out of reach of the neurosynapses of the human brain. Wow. That's my answer. So there's information out there that we just cannot conceive we, or perceive. We don't even know the, how, how to, to ask how to the access question that, right, about it. To get an answer. Correct. We don't know the answer. We don't know the question to get an answer. To get an answer. Right. And not that we don't know it because we haven't been told it yet. No, we just can't conceive it. Can't conceive it. See, you go to a chimp and say, go to a chimp and say, um, uh, what would it be? Oh, uh, uh, something as simple as navigating the stars to get someplace. Chimps right. can't do that. The stars? What? what? Navigate? What? Right. What? Spaceship? What? Rocket? Fuel? What? None of that. None of it. You can't even have that conversation. Right. So that's my point. Ugh. Now I'm thinking that this and, and, whole thing might be some type of like science experiment by some alien kid now. That, yes. That just, Why not? Why not? Ugh. We, we are all a simulation in an alien kid's basement who hasn't moved out of, out of the house yet. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Minecraft of some other yes, alien Yes, Minecraft. <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow, that, yeah. Man. And then when things get too peaceful and stable, they stir the pot. Stir the pot. They throw in a politician, right. a war, a crazy person, right. throwing things, and then, oh, now it's entertaining. So we're just entertainment for... This is the best video game. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Uh... <laughs> Wow, man, that's a well. Listen, that's a great answer to what boggles your mind. That's a really, yeah. ugh. it doesn't I, so much boggle my mind; it upsets my mind. Yeah, I was about to say it's very upsetting. Are we not? I'm mad. I don't even know why. <laughs> like, <laughs> here's my one out. On what? This. You ready? what? Go ahead. Because for humans, our knowledge is cumulative. So true. You don't have to invent calculus. Somebody else did that. Right. You just have to use you can it. Use it. Right. Learn it and use it. Right. So I have the feeling that we are every next generation that has sort of brilliant people contributing to our understanding of the universe, they're adding a rung to a ladder. Right. And then we all sort of climb up that and then just get that next rung. And then climb that. And then well, the next rung. Well, with that in mind, I think that the next um evolutionary step for human beings is that we will create an intelligence greater than our own. That's really the deal. This scares the hell out of everyone. Yeah. Because that intelligence will say, we don't need you. Uh, you know what? And we'd have to say you're right. That's yeah. what happened in the Matrix. Yeah. You are a virus on this earth. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> I smell you, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> no, he was smelling Morpheus. Oh, that's right. Mr. That's right. Get, your, get your Matrix. I, if you're going to go there I in know. front of me. I'm in front of the wrong That's person. my favorite movie. That's true. That's Don't true. even. Yes, he was talking to Morpheus when so he was Morpheus. tied up in the chair. Yeah. Yes. It's the smell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You got you to gotta have some really serious BO for a computer to tell you you stink. <laughs> I'm just that's saying. That's I'm good. just saying. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's get through the electronics <laughs> exactly. into the... Into the <laughs> All right. So this is right. Alex Gregg 56 from Instagram. And Alex Gregg says this. If the universe needs not make any sense to us, then what is the point of doing science? Is science not, in fact, the discipline of trying to grasp what's around us? And by the way, is this statement not equal to the old one, which is God has his reason to make it that way? So just don't ask. Ooh, first, I never heard that expression. Uh, but that uh, the shorter version of that is God works in mysterious ways. That is so true. Yeah, when you can't explain it, you can't. You just, have, well, no. God, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Right. And if you can't explain it using God, then you do. Right. right. Oh, God has blessed you. You've blessed God. It's something, you, you know, then there's a tsunami takes out a quarter million people. God, God hates works. you. God, no one says that. No one says that. Why don't no. we say that? <laughs> We should say that, you know. I want to start saying, you know what? I think God hates you. Well, the most hateful God in our uh, culture is the one represented on insurance forms. Oh, that's so true. Acts of God. Acts of God. Right. It's only e very bad things. Oh no my. one says, uh, flowers bloomed in your garden, 
an act of God. Right. No, it's mm -hmm. tsunami took out your house. That's and now you're homeless on the street. Act of God. Wow. Look at that. This moment of God hates you brought to you by Farmers Insurance. <laughs> Stay far. Stay far. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. What's, <laughs> dun, ba, dun, ba, 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 ba. What's that one? Um, uh, nationwide. Is, is not is. on your side. <laughs> nationwide is on your side. God is not. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's enough. So. I'm going to get some hate mail now. <laughs> oh, Chuck, you, you hate God, Chuck? Is that it? Okay, sorry. Um, so. The, so is science, in fact, the discipline of trying to grasp what is around okay, us? Okay, so what he started, so why, why he started they, quoting me right. where I said, I opened my book, The um, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry, right. with the quote, the universe is under no, no obligation, obligation to make sense to you. Right. Okay. What that means is mm -hmm. your five traditional senses, which rose up out of the Serengeti. Okay which help us not get eaten by lions. Right. Right? They're very good at that. They're not as good at contemplating infinity. Right. They're not good contemplating time scales much longer than your life expectancy. So true. You, don't, you can't intuit billions of years. You can't intuit infinitesimals. There are things that are hard for us. Right. There are things that may even be impossible for us. Can you picture a five-dimensional cube? No, I cannot. No, you cannot. Can you no. picture a four-dimensional cube? Uh, probably not. No. Probably not. Actually, the, 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 the Tesseract is close. Yeah. That's a, like a... I can, I can actually picture that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a drawing. I, I have a Tesseract. Do you really? Yeah, I do. Get out. Yeah. Oh. Should I... Uh, oh, all right. Well, I'll bring it in one maybe, day. Yeah. Like, yeah let's, another episode. Another episode. We'll bring, it'll be uh, the episode of Higher Dimensions. Sweet. Do a whole thing on just Higher Dimensions. Oh, that's, you know, that's what, a can good we episode. Can we do that? Yeah, do that? I like that. Yeah. We did that? We did that already. How come I don't remember? Man, I'm getting old. Did I have my Tesseract in my hand? Well, now we got to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Update it. Which I took this from Thanos. So what it means is if you are going to deduce what is or is not true in the universe, right. your senses are not the most reliable measure of whether it's true. So true. Right. Because the senses give you a restricted understanding of what's actually going on in the universe. Your eyes, you would never trade them for anything, yet they only expose your, your mind to a very tiny, narrow strip of all the electromagnetic energy that's out there. Right. You can't see infrared. You can feel it as heat, but you can't mm -hmm. see it. Right. Uh, ultraviolet, you can't see that either. Mm -hmm. You can feel that in a delayed sense by getting sunburn that's and right. skin cancer. It's not telling you in that instant it's a del time delay. But keep going out. There's uh, infrared, ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma rays. Can't see any of that. But mm -hmm. the universe is talking to you in that. So are you going to say, my senses give me everything that there is in the universe, and therefore it makes sense? No. <clears throat> as long as we detect things that fall outside of our senses, it's a challenge for you to declare that what we say, do, and discover makes sense. The very statement makes sense means your senses can contemplate it. Right. That your senses have experience. If I let go of a ball and it floats up, you'll say, that doesn't make sense. Right. Because your senses always told you that if you let go of a ball, it, it drops. drops. right? And in fact, the very statement, let it go. Not the... the, the frozen. Not the frozen version, no. but just let it go means drop it. They mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. But that can only be true on Earth with a force of gravity pointing down. In space, in free orbit, you let go, it just floats there. It stays right there. It stays right there. So, Like my problems. <laughs> stay right there. Yeah. I must be in space because all my problems, somebody says, drop it. And I say, I did that. They're right still here. And you let it go and it's still I, there. Exactly. Right. So my point is the methods so and tools of you, science yeah, so. give you a way to understand what is true without it being hinged on whether your senses think it's true. Nice. So the methods and tools of science are access to truth, where you can still probe the universe, whereas God works in mysterious ways kind of ends that conversation. Whereas I say, I've developed a new instrument that can see in ways humans cannot. Oh my gosh, that opens entire worlds of investigation, entire branches of science. Mm. And there you have it. All right. We got to take a break. Okay. My answers are too long. No, they're But they're, they're deep. We gotta, we're going There's, deep yeah, here. It's going deep. So that's okay. Exactly. All right. When we come back, more of Cosmic Queries, the deep edition.
Wondry's American Innovations presents Mission to Mars. This season explores what advancements have been made and what it will take to send humans to Mars. On July 20th, 1989, President George Bush announced his vision for a manned mission to Mars. Nearly three months later, NASA published a complex 30-year plan to get humans to Mars. However, Congress refused to authorize the spending, and NASA's manned mission to Mars was grounded before it could even start. Over 30 years later, the power of government and big business necessary for such an undertaking is finally starting to come together. And now, the next chapter of humankind's space race is on. If you're a Star Talk listener, you know that pushing the boundaries of space exploration is always a compelling story, and Mission to Mars brings that story to life. Listen to Mission to Mars from American Innovations on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or even one week early by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Wondery, feel the story. This is Star Talk. We're back. So it's Cosmic Queries. Yes, it is. The Deep Edition. Deep. Deep. Yes. Deep. 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 Okay. <laughs> I think I know the difference. What I is? think I think we're hitting the same note, but I have more sort of cavity resonance. This is chest true. cavity. Well, you're a bigger guy than than Deep I. I. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right. Chuck. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So this is from probably asleep. That's the name of the person? That's the name of the person. Okay. I like that. Your mama didn't like you. <laughs> yeah. How long do you think the human race will actually survive? Wow. I mean, there's precedent for that, right? Well, so the, you can look at what is the average life expectancy of mammals, mammal yeah, species. Exactly. And last I checked, it was around 2 million years, something like that. Oh, and so we've been we around. We have a long way to go. We have a long way to go. We've been around, you know, a couple hundred thousand years in our, in our current anatomical form, Cro-Magnon form. Right. And so that means we have a long way to go. But this presumes that the species is not smart enough to kill itself. Mm, well, then it's over. <laughs> it was nice knowing you guys. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. have invented multiple ways to kill ourselves. Yeah. And I don't think the elephants did. Or, you know, nobody else did this. Right. Uh, the mice, no, they're not no. killing themselves. Right. Humans, yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe cockroaches invented human beings. Why? Because when everything's gone, they're going to be the only ones left. And it's like. No, no, then they don't have to invent us in the first place. What kind of reasoning are you using here? They want everything else gone. <laughs> no, they need us to build the structures that they then move right, into. Right, they move. Yeah, yeah. And they, uh, I don't mind it. Um, yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. we are. Yeah. Uh, but so I think what he's really asking is in your estimation, from your sage opinion, okay. I give how us. How long do you think we will. Last, I, I give us twenty years. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, that's funny. <laughs> no, I I think we're good. This is why many people want to become a two planet species, terraform Mars, mm-hmm. send some humans there. So if something bad happens on Earth, you still have humans somewhere else. Wow. That is not encouraging at all. <laughs> not for half the people who aren't yeah, on the exactly. planet. Exactly. Yeah. So, and if an asteroid comes, if a killer virus, if AI goes out, gets out of hand. So, I understand seeding something with a remnant for survival of the species. That's extraneous. I mean, that's that's something that's outside of our own destruction. You know, uh, even though we could stop an asteroid from hitting us if we put we know the how right we just we, no, ain't nobody doing it that's but what we i'm know saying how. if we put yeah. the resources into right. it we could stop even that from happening so what is, what's the example you're giving so so what do you mean to stop the asteroid no no what it, so so what i'm saying is you know w- will we ever get to a place where the as the buddhist monks call it the so-called monkey brain that causes us to do so much destructive um work to each other and to the planet. Will we ever get to a place where we overcome that or we're able to train those who come behind us to overcome that? Okay. Now, it does happen in some people. I get it. I First, I've never heard a Buddhist monk 
Say the phrase monkey brain. Really? <laughs> I've never heard that. Yeah. This is a thing? This okay, is a fine. Thing. I, that is a I, thing. I go to 10 more monasteries. And, <laughs> <laughs> you feeling monkey brain today? Exactly. All right. Delicious. So I've heard of reptilian brain, but not monkey brain. Yes. Okay. So, so the reptilian brain is referenced something primal right. that goes on within you. So if we follow the reasoning by Steven Pinker in his book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, mm -hmm. he studied the likelihood of you dying before maturity or dying before adulthood we're just dying from at the hands of another human from early days of tribal warfare to modern days of, of state-sanctioned global warfare. Mm. And what he found is that the likelihood of you dying in that way has been dropping ever since. Okay. So tribal warfare, you, could, you would kill maybe a third or half of the other tribe and, or the entire tribe. And then you win and you get their land. That doesn't happen today. True. The state surrenders before that happens. True. Saving the lives of the rest of the population. If you look at, I, I did this just recently. If you look at what countries had the greatest percent of their population die in the Second World War. I th was it Belarus? One of them is very high. It's like a third. All right. I forgot the exact numbers, but they're high. But they're not a half. And you keep going down and you get to, to even combat... Germany, even ones that were heavily bombed, Germany, Japan, a fraction of the total population. That is not how it used to end in tribal warfare. So, now consider that even so, during the Second World War, between 1939 and 1945, 1,000 humans were killed by other humans per hour for every hour from 1939 to 1945. Wow. Is that going on today? No. 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 Oh, we're, re so, we're really slipping. No, no, stop. Yeah, so, <laughs> we really got to pick up our pick game. Up just so we can be. Yeah. So the point is, often that era is called the greatest generation. Right. Be well, because they fought, you know, evil forces and, you know, this sort of thing. Although my father fought in a segregated army. So he's not thinking that was the greatest generation. He has other, out other perspectives on that period the second greatest generation <laughs> my point is is the greatest generation the one where the fewest fraction of everyone dies out of hate we might have a lot of hate but if the number of people who die from it is lower than ever before right then this arc that you were hinting at that mm -hmm. may be a next generation learns from the previous one maybe that's going to work europe with all of their turbulence and turmoil they actually haven't been at war with each other for 70 years right is there another 70-year period in the history of Europe where nobody was fighting anybody? Not I a, don't think so. Not if Twitter has anything to do with it. <laughs> to, to foment. <laughs> well, what you're saying is, imagine if Twitter okay. existed. Back then? Back then, yeah, oh my god. Let me gosh. tell you something. With the, the, we, the war wouldn't have stopped <laughs> until everybody was dead. Would have taken like people would have said, "I I surrender." A tweet would have gone out and they'd be like, "I take it back. Let's keep fighting. <laughs> keep fighting. Let's keep fighting. <laughs> I don't care. I hate you more." I, right. <laughs> so maybe we are getting kinder, kinder and gentler. Mm -hmm. uh, time still needs to bear that out on a level that would please everyone, but I still worry that this primal brain will always segregate us all by some arbitrary factor and thereby justify doing harm to other groups. Hmm. Interesting. That's, uh, I think you're Wait, right. Who, who's the comedian? Was it uh, Franklin Ajay? One of these guys from the 70s. Back in the day. In, in, in the day. Yeah. In the day. He was talking about who hates who in the world, right? And he, and he says, reading the papers? And what? In Northern Ireland? The Protestants? And the Catholics are fighting each other? Right. And they're both white? Yeah. He said, you know I don't have a chance because I'm black. <laughs> That's funny. That's true. Yeah. If, right. If white people divide themselves up in that way, right. two Christian communities killing each other. Right. Yeah. And it's, they're both white and they're both Christian. And they're it's, both, o it's over for you, brother. It's, it's over for everybody yeah, else. Exactly. If people can kill each other for those reasons, it's almost no hope in this world. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm sorry. I don't have a good answer. No, that was a pretty good answer. The answer is we're not going to make it. Um, <laughs> I'd like to think we go thousands of years into the future and possibly outlive the sun. All right. That'd be great. By st star hopping to other planetary systems. Mm, that's, uh, you know, I'm just going to say that's the way it's going to end because I won't be here. So that's great. <laughs> Maybe. Dep it has been said.
that the first person who will never die is now alive. What? That's a well. No, no that's just how you do it. I know what you're saying. So they get they get some new thing that right. makes you live an extra fifty years. So now you live to 150 instead of 100, and then somewhere in there, there's another thing we get. Now you live another 200 years. So right. now the 150 goes to 350. Now you can live 500 years. Now you go to a thousand. You can live 5,000 years now. So as we progress mm -hmm. in our understanding of what ages you, if we can reverse that or prevent it from ever advancing, the person, there's someone alive today who will benefit from that. That's, That's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, so if that happens, you better find another planet. That's this all. is true. Yeah. yeah. That's the premise of a show called Altered Carbon, where people actually yes. take their consciousness and put it into what they call a sleeve, which is the body. So that's I think I voice over the opening sequence to that show. Oh my god! I think we had that conversation uh, yeah, once yeah. where you told me that because yeah, I, I told you I was. A I don't remember if it was with the pilot or the other shows, but no. I did. A, I, I I lent my voice to the cause. Nice! Yeah. Wow! All right. Well, let's go to Joey twenty four. Joey Junior twenty four. He says this personal question: Based on all your experiences and knowledge thus far. Personal what? for me or for you? Personal for you. Okay. Yeah, nobody asking me anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he okay. says, based on all of your experiences and knowledge thus far, what do you think the meaning of our human existence is? He just asked you, what is the meaning of life according to yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson? Okay. So, I, uh, in my next book. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't. You never hear me plug my stuff. I was going to say, here's the meaning of life right now. <laughs> plug your book when you get no, a chance. No. <laughs> uh, the next one's called "Letters from an Astrophysicist." Uh, you know what? Uh, this yes, is correspondence I've had with people who've had similar angst. Yes, about their existence. Well, that's and, not just the book. It's not about that. No, no. Well, it's this, about all different kinds of all, letters. You all received. kinds of letters. Yes, but a very recurring theme is that people want to know the meaning of life and their significance of their life in this world yeah and some of them come from religious angles some are secular but everybody's got this burning issue yes so here's how i have dealt with it others will do it other ways okay but here's how i deal with it i'm interested now many people are in search of the meaning of life mm -hmm. as though it's behind a tree right or under a rock right everybody knows it's in a drawer <laughs> In, in the back. Exactly. Near the paper clip. Yes. And the <laughs> it's in that drunk drawer, too. It's not like a like an underwear drawer. Or something. You know that drawer where you go to look for stamps and stuff? Yeah, 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 that drawer. That's right. The, the, the junk drawer. The yeah, junk yeah. drawer. But Everybody's go got a junk drawer. Everybody's got a junk drawer. It's near the kitchen somewhere. Right. right. So if you are looking for meaning, you may never find it. Ooh. So instead... Recognize that you have the power to manufacture meaning. Create it within yourself. And that's what I do. My meaning for life is derived by several simple principles. Have I lessened the sufferings of others today? Mm -hmm. That brings meaning to me. Because that means the world is a little better off because I was in it today. Okay. If after your day is over, the world is worse off, you have subtracted meaning. Mm, I so, should kill myself. No, no, because at the end of every day, somebody <laughs> is like that mother. Beep, beep. But go ahead. So, so lessen the suffering of others in right. some way. Right. Doesn't mean redirect your whole life, mind, body, and soul. But if you can help someone across the street, help a, 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 an aging person, do you know, make a little a child laugh. Just put a little bit of joy in the world mm -hmm. to lessen the suffering. I also try to learn something every day. All right. Now, I, I'm a, I, I like being a, a perpetual student. Right. Most people hated being students. This saddens me. School is finished, and what do you do? You run down the steps. School is out forever. Right. School out for the summer. Yeah. That attitude captured in that song mm -hmm. is as though you don't want to be in school. And what's your only job in school? It's to learn. To learn. That's and somehow, shame. that's a chore. Yeah. I don't blame you for that's feeling a, that way. I blame the, the system. school system yeah. for not instilling within us eternal curiosity, knowing that you'll spend more years of your life not in school than in school. And so if you have curiosity, mm -hmm. you can be a lifelong learner. That's right. And so I want to lessen the sufferings of others Stay and make curious. sure I learn something more about the world today 
than I did yesterday. Nice. And who's to say whether that extra increment of learning can help me be better at lessening the, lessening the sufferings of others? Ooh. So that is how I make meaning in life. And as a result, I own thousands of books. Thousands. And I, I read a little bit. You know, I have a little stash near my bed, and mm -hmm. I cycle them out. Um, and every day I try to help. It's harder now because I get recognized. Um, but I try to help people every day. Total strangers. That's nice. Yeah. So you can make meaning for yourself. Don't yes. look for it because you may never find it. Uh, you know, I'm going to say as a philosophy that is a that's a that's 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 admirable. That's, that's in the book. I, I wrote that in the book. Nice, yeah. excellent, excellent. Thank you. Give me one, we, another we, question. We got one more question. Can we can fit it in this segment. Go. All right, here we go. Oh man, what? Ninja nay, ninja nay. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> I think that's your name. <laughs> Damn okay. you, people. Uh, <laughs> okay. On Instagram says, I keep hearing the phrase, the vacuum of space. Yes. How exactly is it a vacuum? Very nice. That's a really good question. We're not going to get the answer oh. until we take a break. Okay. <laughs> when we come back from our break, more from Cosmic Queries, The Deep Edition. Are you always taking care of your family? Do you often take care of others and not yourself? Well, now's the time to take care of yourself because you deserve it. Teladoc gives you access to licensed therapists to help you get back to feeling your best, to feeling like yourself again. Sometimes we don't know how much we need to talk to somebody. Take it from me personally. During the entire pandemic, I have had virtual sessions and it has been such an incredible help. Now with Teladoc, you can speak to a licensed therapist by phone or video. Therapy appointments are available seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. local time. Hey, maybe you're feeling overwhelmed. Maybe you feel stressed or anxious or depressed or lonely, or you might be struggling with a family issue. Teladoc can help. No need to wait months to get a therapist. Teladoc is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy to change counselors if needed for free. Teladoc therapy is available through most insurance or employers and individual plans are also available. Download the app or visit teladoc.com slash startalk today to get started. T-E-L-A-D-O-C dot com slash startalk. You know you're ready to earn your degree, but you need a university that works with your busy schedule. At WGU, their programs were built to be flexible. WGU offers a quality degree program that's affordable, flexible, and even makes it possible to graduate faster. You can earn a respected bachelor's or master's degree for under $8,700 per year, fees included. What? What year is this? See what WGU's competency-based programs can offer you. There are no set login times and 24-7 access to most coursework. So that means you can earn your respected bachelor's or master's degree on your own time. WGU's low flat rate tuition covers as many courses as you can complete each term. That means you can use what you have to get what you want. Take your skills and use them to graduate faster. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash startalk. That's wgu.edu slash startalk for your $65 application fee waived. Now is the perfect time to turn your cool idea into a new website. And you should do it with Squarespace. Why do I say that? Because I have used Squarespace personally to make two, actually three websites, and it was beyond easy. It was a pleasurable experience. You'll find what you need, whether you're showcasing your work, blogging or publishing content, selling products and services, announcing upcoming events, or anything you can dream of. Buying a domain from Squarespace is easy because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. And get to know your audience with their analytics tools, which include insight on page views, traffic sources, time on site, audience geography, and more. It's so simple too. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. 
All websites are optimized for mobile right out of the box, so it looks great on any device. And every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. So here's what you're going to do. Head to squarespace.com slash StarTalk for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code StarTalk to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash StarTalk. Offer a code StarTalk for 10% off. Hey, we'd like to give a Patreon shout out to the following Patreon patrons, Roy Hill Percival, Jose Clark, and Dr. Janet L. Walsh. Thanks so much, guys, for helping us make this little trip through the cosmos. And if you would like to support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com. This is Star Talk. We're back on Star Talk, Cosmic Queries, the deep edition. Chuck, yes, we dangled a question before that break. What we was it? We did a big tease from Ninja Janit, whatever. No, Janit, I don't know. Said, I keep hearing the phrase, the vacuum of space. Mm-hmm. How exactly is it a vacuum? Right. Okay. Good so question. when I was a kid, a vacuum was a physical object. Yes, it was. When I heard physicists speak of the vacuum of space, I just imagined all these hoovers you right. know, in, in the sky. Right. So I didn't know that a vacuum was a thing, was it was an it was a concept. And then you make a machine that duplicates that thing. I just didn't know that. So I learned. Okay. So a vacuum is where there's basically no air. Okay. You can have objects there. But when we think of a vacuum, it's not a place where there isn't anything. It's a place where there's no air molecules moving, Mm. typically. Mm -hmm. All right. Generally, you can have some, and we would still classify it as a vacuum. Because you have to distinguish like a regular old vacuum or a perfect vacuum. Right. Now, you know what happens if there's an object and you take away all the air molecules? The object outgasses. Oh. There are air molecules embedded Inside? in the surface of that object, and they start coming out. It's fascinating. Then you heat it, it sends out more. Mm. So it's very hard to make a perfect vacuum. Very hard. So here's an old saying. Nature abhors, abhors a, vacuum. a vacuum. These are people who have never been into space. Most of the universe is a vacuum. Nature loves a vacuum. Nice. Did I, was I Trumpy in there? No. Love. Nature loves <laughs> A vacuum. A vacuum. So perfect. <laughs> preferably Trump ran <laughs> vacuums. Trump Trump ran Trump ran vacuums. We <laughs> suck the best. <laughs> Chuck. There's another there's another saying. Uh, there's no such thing as gravity. Earth sucks. You ever hear that? Oh, one? okay. Okay. So uh, the point is when there's a source of gravity, all well, the air wants to go to that source of gravity. And it leaves a vacuum everywhere else. So a vacuum is simply where there's no air. And it's not anything deep. The odd thing in the universe is that you have places where air, where gas molecules collect. Okay, that, right. Those are the unusual places in the universe. Right. And they're called stars and gaseous planets and the atmospheres of rocky planets. Nice. Yeah, so there you have a vacuum. So, Chuck, I want to put, put some closure on this vacuum question. Okay. Okay? This is the second, no, my third book I ever published. Oh, okay. It's called Just Visiting This Planet. All right. And it's a collection of uh, uh, Q&A. I had a column uh, a pe- with a pen named Merlin. People would ask fun, really playful questions. That's cool. And I collected, this is like decades old, but there's some timeless content in here. Somebody asked about the vacuum. Mm -hmm. Can I read it? Yeah, go ahead, please. Or you can't read otherwise. Okay. Here we go. The best vacuum you will find anywhere. I wrote this. Wrote this 30 years ago. That's cool. The, the best vacuum you will find anywhere, according to four out of five vacuum retailers and five out of five astronomers, is the void of intergalactic space. But we can then ask, is intergalactic space nothing? Hmm. No, it still contains space. If you feel obliged to call intergalactic space nothing, then you must invent a word to refer to the region outside of the universe. In this location, where we presume there to be no space, there can be no nothing. Wow. Let's call it, we're left with no choice. Nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing. A place where there's not even nothing. 
It's the nothing, nothing. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm just saying. I like that. I'm just saying. So, Chuck, you want some more vacuum talk? Of course. <laughs> I gotta. I, I feel like you just showed up at my door and dumped some dirt on my carpet. <laughs> More vacuum talk. Okay, vacuum so, talk. So in Death by Black Hole, right? Okay. Uh, I don't remember what number book this is. So in the chapter on being dense. Okay. Okay. That's name something of the I know a great deal about. <laughs> the range of measured densities within our universe is staggeringly large. We find the highest densities within pulsars where neutrons are so tightly packed that one thimbleful would weigh about as much as a herd of 50 million elephants. 50 million. And then a rabbit disappears into thin air at a magic show. Nobody tells you that thin air already contains over 10 septillion atoms per cubic meter. Wow. Thin air. Thin air, right. Okay. The best laboratory vacuum changers can pump down to as few as 10 billion atoms per cubic meter. Oh, okay. Best vacuums. That's the best vacuum. In a cubic meter, 10 billion air molecules are still walking around. Okay. Interplanetary space gets down to about 10 million atoms per cubic meter. Hmm. While interstellar space is as low as a half a million atoms per cubic wow, meter. Wow, that is nothing. That is <laughs> Wow. That ain't, that, that is, is I nothing. Mean, okay. 500,000 atoms. The award, the award for nothingness, however, must be given to the space between the galaxies. Intergalactic space, where it is difficult to find more than a few atoms for every 10 cubic meters. Wow. That wins. That's, that's almost, that wins. that's almost nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost nothing, nothing. <laughs> All right. Wow. We're going to go into a deep lightning round. Really? Okay? We only have five minutes left? Okay, let's go. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is Ja Saldana says, uh, right now, what should be the priority in the field of space exploration? Searching for life? Searching for potential threats of another kind of search? Uh, or is there just no hurry at this matter at all? Greetings from Mexico. Mexico. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what is it? Is it is it inner? Is are we looking for life? I, I, he wants my opinion. I yeah. got an opinion. Exploration, I, I, life. I, I, go ahead. I got an opinion. All right, go ahead. I want to do it all. Why not do it all? Why, and all of the above. All of the above. E. Because the moment you do this and not that, right? They say, well, why are you doing that and not that? Oh, because we voted that way. But maybe you don't know why you should do that, right. and you want to do that. Some people want to do that. Here's what you do. Mm -hmm. You don't build a road just from New York to L.A. You build roads everywhere so that, yeah, I want to visit that forest. I want to visit this 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 uh, rocky monument. I want to do things that are not prescribed by you. I'm going to see the biggest ball of yarn ever. Exactly. Right. Right? So what you do is you make a spaceship that is modular, strap on different combinations of rockets. Right. Uh, this, ro this combination gets you to an asteroid. To mine it, this gets you to the backside of the moon. This gets you to Mars. So you don't prescribe what it is you're going to do next in space. You let the creativity and imagination of all those who've ever looked up say, this is what I want to do. And you say, here you go. Two rockets from aisle B, a, a booster from aisle C, you're on your way. Can I put that on a credit card? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I got it. Here we all go. Right. All right. Adam in the Airwaves wants to know this from Instagram. How far behind do you think astronomy would be if the Earth didn't have a moon. Oh. Wow. Okay, so it's not how far behind we'd be. Right. It's how far advanced we'd be. Ooh. Wow. Okay, so let me split this out. Yeah. I tweeted uh, during Space Week, the 50th anniversary of the Apollo landing, mm -hmm. there's a saying that's common in the space circles. It's, if God wanted us to explore space, he would have given us a moon. Right. Okay. So that's a good saying. That's a good saying. Yeah. But that exploration is not astrophysicists' exploration. That one is people going into space. Right. We, why, we, you build a rocket to go where? You don't have a moon to visit. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're talking about astrophysics, do you know how many stars the naked eye can see at night? Uh, more than I can count. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's about three to four thousand. Oh, really? We're unaided. Yeah. Binoculars, it's 
hundred times that. Yeah. Telescopes, it's a billion times that. But eyes, three to four thousand stars. Okay. When it's a full moon out, three hundred stars. Yeah. Right. The moon wreaks havoc on our ability yeah. to see the rest of the universe. So our observing schedules with huge telescopes are split uh -huh. according to dark time or bright time. And if you look at if you have bright time observations, it's the moon is up and you can only look at bright objects in the night sky. Wow. The deep universe only comes to us when the moon is not up. So the moon is basically a pain in the ass. It's a star blocker. Wow. Yes, star blocker. Look at that. That's what it is. So astronomy would be probably half again more advanced because we would have had these greatest telescopes in the world looking at the night sky twice as often. Right. In the darkest parts of the night sky. There you go. Wow. Next. That was a damn good answer. Okay. Um, this is uh, Ever Sitapur. I don't know what his. Who cares? Uh, I'm sorry. Whoever that is cares. Let me tell you something. This is the last time he's going to be asking you a question. All right. Well, you know what your name is. I'm going to call you George. All right. So All right. George wants to know this. What? what is the shape of space itself? Ooh. That's a good question. Well, space can be curved. In the presence of matter or energy, as prescribed by Einstein's That's general, general theory, theory of relativity. Exactly. relativity. And there's the oft-repeated saying, mm -hmm. matter tells space how to curve, space tells matter how to move. Uh -huh. So space has curvature in the presence of matter and energy. It curves in towards it, with the ultimate expression of that, a black hole, where it curves in and it never curves back out. Wow. Right? If you want to ask, what is the shape of all of space? That's like saying, what's the shape of the universe, the observable universe? It's basically a perfect sphere. Wow. Right. Because it's your horizon. Right. Okay. It's a perfect sphere the way when you're at sea, your horizon is a perfect circle. Around that's right. The same you, distance in every direction. That's right. If you're, if you're just out and there's nothing but water right. and around And so you. what is the three-dimensional version of a circle? A sphere. A sphere. So in space, you can see to your horizon in every direction. Every direction, it all at once. Puts us at the... Uh, we, it makes us think we're at the center so, of right. a sphere. But that's no different from you thinking you're in the, the center, center of, of the ocean. ocean. Right. Just because you're in the center of your horizon. Ah, that's... Next. Ah, that's great. Right. That's good couple stuff more. right there. Here more. we go. go for it. This is uh, Chen Yuan who says, if we look, if we were to look in all directions, billions of light years away, will we see younger universe in all directions enveloping our bigger one now? <laughs> I have to rephrase that because if as you look out, you see things not as they are, right, but, but as, as they, they were. once were. Right. So you are looking at a younger and younger and younger universe. That's the whole point of cosmology. It allows the fact that it takes light time to reach us allows us to see what the universe was doing in the past. Right. If light traveled at infinite speeds, you see the whole universe as it is now, with no evidence of what it was once doing. But because it takes light time to move. You look out, you see a younger and younger and younger and younger universe until you see the Big Bang itself. Mm -hmm. And that is 14 billion light years time away from us in every direction. Okay? For 20 billion years ago. Right. Okay? And if you calculate that distance through that changing time, it's 14 billion light years to that horizon. Okay? So, by the way, that horizon is much farther away today. Right. Because... The universe has been expanding ever since. But you don't see it as it is today. You see it as it was. Right. All right. So, um, I don't know what to say after that. I, I, I say, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one last question. If you like to do a quickie. Go. All quick right. I got to find Go. one that you can do really quick. You don't know Go. how quick I can answer a question. Uh, okay. Then, then I'm just going to judge gonna, that. I'm going to give you one. Here we Go. Go. This is, oh, what did I spell? This is Basante. Okay, I don't care what this is. Um, Chuck, I'm you have sorry. To at least try, Chuck. Okay, Basan Basante Basanting. Okay, forget it. Uh, I'm read the name. Give here, me. here's the name right there. What's that say? What's that? Basanting. You're right. That's what it is. Basanting. I Sing. Yeah. Okay. 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 What if all the matter that we see in the universe is just three-dimensional part of some four-dimensional matter and the dark gravity is just the gravity from the 4D part that we cannot see? I love it. 
<laughs> we are so blind to a higher dimensions. Right. It could be that all the mysteries in our three dimensions plus time are completely solved by looking at this stuff from a higher from dimension. From a higher dimension. Right. 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 Just if you lived in just a, a flat surface, there'd be stuff going on you had no idea. Right. And we say, but can't you just see? Yeah. Just look up. Right. What, what is up? What is that giant graphite thing making making <laughs> making <laughs> creating stuff? Right. right. On that flat surface. On that flat surface. Right. Right. What That's is an artist? That? Right. Where is he? Exactly. It's mysterious. It just shows up. Right. 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 So I love it. I, that's the kind of universe I want it to be. Because then when we figure out how to see higher dimensions, boom, we figured everything out. Bada bing. There you go. All that, Chuck, we got to run. All right. That, that, I enjoyed that. We should that do more. Fun. Cosmic Queries, the deep, deep edition. edition. Chuck Nice tweeting at Chuck Nice Comic. Thank you, sir. Very good. I've been your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. And as always, I bid you today. Oh, wait, what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I bid you. So you're ready to earn your degree, but you need a university that works with your schedule. Well, WGU and their programs are built to be flexible. WGU offers a quality degree program that's affordable and even makes it possible to graduate faster. Plus, you can earn a respected bachelor's or master's degree for under $8,700 per year. Fees included. That's right. You heard me. That is the correct. It's not. Nope. $8,700 per year. Let your experience and dedication help you earn your degree faster. See what WGU's competency-based programs can offer you. With no set login times and 24-7 access to most coursework, you can really earn a respected bachelor's or master's degree on your own schedule. The low tuition rate covers as many courses as you can complete each term. That means the faster you learn, the more you'll save. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash star talk that's wgu.edu slash star talk for your 65 dollar application fee poof gone waved poof gone waved